The past year has seen a groundswell of support and activism for the women's movement globally. Nowhere more so than in the United States, where Hollywood came together to support some brave and very courageous women. It's very telling that the 2017 Time Magazine Person of the Year was the Silence Breakers. We've heard from some very brave and courageous women here today, and we're about to meet one more. Californian-based Irish woman Emer Noon is one of the world's premier conductors of video games music scores. She's also an award-winning composer and producer. If you've ever battled wolves at the gates of Draenor, or helped Link to rescue Princess Zelda, or if any of your children have, then you'll have been inspired by her music. She's responsible for some of the most enduring soundscapes in video gaming, for some of the world's most globally successful games, like World of Warcraft and Warlords of Draenor. She has toured the world and smashed the stereotype that conductors should be male. She's also toured as a conductor for The Legend of Zelda and was chosen by Nintendo to conduct the world's first ever 3D filming of a video game score, a technological milestone in the evolution of the virtual reality gaming industry. She's a role model for all of us. Ethna is an advocate for and a mentor towards women in tech and in music. She gives back generously and is the founder of the Dublin International Games Music Festival. At this stage, her music has reached over 100 million people and continues to inspire them to build, imagine and create many new worlds. Let's take a short look at her story. Women on the podium are not my cup of tea. Men make better conductors. Musicians get distracted by a cute girl on podium. My name is Emer Noon, and this is my story. Growing up in the west of Ireland in a village of 480 people, like every other little girl, all I wanted to do was conduct orchestras. At 13 years of age, I declared to the nuns that I would one day conduct in Vienna. Sure, they thought I was mental. I finally met a conductor I'd grown up worshipping on TV, and he told me I hadn't a chance. He said, you've three things going against you. You're young, you're Irish, and you're female. Of course, I thought this was the best title for an autobiography I'd ever heard. Come with me as we traverse the globe in search of great music, food, characters, and scintillating adventure. There are times when there are as many people on stage as the population of my home village. And as for cups of tea, would that be one lump or two, mate? I might be able to find that one out of tune note in a sea of musicians. Take me off the podium and I have trouble remembering where I left my own shoes. In the words of the great god of song, Billy Joel, you've got your passion, you've got your pride, but don't you know that only fools are satisfied? Vienna waits for you. Ladies and gentlemen, giving a warm Irish welcome home to Emer Noon. <laughs> I can't tell you how special it is for me to come home and share some of my adventures with you. So first, I want to address a couple of things. My other hometown is Los Angeles, and it would be remiss of me not to just mention a little bit about the amazing Me Too campaign that's happening. Now, I had one tiny contribution to make preemptively to the Me Too campaign, and it was in having the great pleasure of working with the actor Lola Kirk. She's the principal, the female lead on Amazon's Golden Globe and Emmy Award-winning show, Mozart in the Jungle. Her character is an oboist who's in love with the conductor, who suddenly gets notions about herself. 
and those notions are to ascend the podium. So they approached me to coach Lola in what was the first scripted representation of a woman on the podium in television and music history. Not something to be proud of in 2018, but it happened. So I'm going to get back to a little, a few of the quotes that you saw, all of them recent. And I want to discuss uh, one in particular about the cute girl on the podium. That gentleman comes by the opinion honestly, because his mentor and teacher, uh, Yuri Timurkinov, said that the essence of a conductor's profession is strength, and the essence of a woman is weakness. This, of course, reminded me of the famous quote about um, Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire uh, by um, Bob Thaves, who said, Fred Astaire, yeah, he was good, I'm paraphrasing, he was good, but everything he did, Ginger Rogers did backwards and in high heels. <laughs> yeah? So, maestros, my colleagues, everything you do, I have done seven months pregnant and in heels. <laughs> that would be an accent on the I in Emer and the E in Touche. <laughs> so my, my husband loves to joke that sometimes when I'm on stage, there are as many as a third or even sometimes half the population of my home village of Kilconnell on the stage with me. I'll give you a look at, at that. Here's last week in Doha, Qatar. And the stage is so big and the choir is so far away that we even have a sonic delay between the front and the back. And this always happens to me and it makes me laugh. I'll have someone from the choir come up to me and say at the end of the concert, oh my God, you're so little. I'm five foot five, so I'm not huge. But I say, well, you do know they put me on a box, right? And they say, no, 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 it's not that. It's not that it's something else. And then I say, do I need to explain to you the difference between small <laughs> and far away? <laughs> so this was kind of thrilling to me because it is something I've worked on. I am small. I am on the inside that little rosy-cheeked little girl. But I'm also something else as well. I'm a professional. I work really hard to get better at my art and my skills. And I need to own my position, and I need to project that, and I need to be conscious of what I'm projecting. So I'm always trying to make myself seem bigger, larger than life. Here's me on a regular day. Here's me in front of the orchestra. <laughs> I remember when I was in college, I lived with an opera singer. Every cupboard was full of every herbal remedy you can possibly imagine. And I'd come down in the middle of the winter time and find a bunch of opera singers around the kitchen table drinking prophylactic lemsips with not a cold between them. And they'd say to me, but Emer, our bodies are instruments. It was always, oh, singers. But I learned a little bit about the physiology of singing. In opera houses, most opera houses don't have amplification because opera singers learn to use their body as an amplifier. You'll see the way they stand, back like this, everything is larger than life, everything is huge. And I'm thinking, well, can I do that in other ways? Because my singing voice is pretty atrocious. But can I learn from this and amplify something else? What is charisma? Is that amplified energy? So I went about my working life and found that, you know, when I get in front of the orchestra, I have one minute to win them over. Not even win them over, but just assert myself. And I read some Chinese, um, some Chinese writings on the three treasures. And the three treasures are Jing, Qi, and Shen. People can interpret it as being like a candle. You have Jing is the body, Qi is the life essence, and Shen is the energy that is cast, and that's the one that interested me most, that is cast by the flame. And the teacher that I was studying with, learning, learning about this, he said to me, you know, your body is like an instrument. And I said, oh, God, no, I can never tell this to singers, ever. 
But he was right. You needed three things to be in tune, because in this day and age, my friends, we need to be instruments for change, as well as instruments in our own lives. We need to be. Uh, we need to, to as as Sinead was saying, self care. But it's like an instrument. You need to practice daily. If it's too highly strung, something might break <laughs> or snap. And we need to be in tune, in tune with our surroundings. Hark! What is this I hear? <laughs> My friends, please welcome some of the most beautiful instrumentalists we have here in Ireland. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the piece we're about to perform because, you know, talking about music is like dancing about architecture. So we're going to show you. The piece you're about to see was commissioned by Blizzard Activision for their game World of Warcraft Warlords of Draenor. And in this piece, there's something that I love, and that's communicating across languages, across cultures, without any words. So on screen, you're going to see orchestras from all over the world, and you're going to hear them, and you're going to see fans, single individuals, who audition to be part of the piece from all over the world. The piece is called Malach, Angel Messenger, and I have never spoken of this from the stage, but since today's special, we will do that. In Hebraic and Judaic traditions, Malach, is the name or the word that is given to the soul of a child. And it is believed that the soul of a child, a malach, can bring a message directly to the ears of God. The piece is a lullaby from a mother. You'll see my friend uh, Maluca de los Santos from Mexico. It's, it's the mother's lullaby telling the story of a great exodus of her people, a great battle, and the sad resolution of that battle. And today, I want to dedicate this performance with my beautiful friends to Aaron Porrick, Noon Garfinkel, Malach, one little angel in his memory, and for his friend, Noah Kairos McMahon. My friends, this is Malach, Angel Messenger, and bear with us while we get hooked up. <laughs>
Thank you, everybody. Happy International Women's Day, and thank you to our beautiful friends.